in a hundred grace, he defeated Justin Garcia in the first match. Armbar, Tellis, or Nibard, one of the two, in about 30 seconds in the second match. He had an absolute war with Janji, which he finished him off with a choke in the last few seconds. Kakareko to get here, defeated the, um, we fought um, uh, the previous year's champion, Inamo. Defeated him um, in the uh, semifinal yesterday. I'm trying to remember which of the other two fights that Kakarako had. Like the 99 category here, in my opinion, this was the toughest category to win. There's just so many guys in here that could have taken the whole thing. And with the mix of jiu-jitsu guys, wrestlers, submission grapplers, guys that know how to put together, it was such um, an interesting mix in this division. And still, it's no surprise that Haja Gracie's here in the finals with Kakareko. That's no shocker to anybody. No. That's, that's the top of the food chain right there. The big question is how the pace of this match is going to go. Both these guys are known for coming out aggressive, explosive moves. Discussion with the referee right now, probably clarifying some of the rules. Rematch <laughs> stare down. Padrin comes in here with a large contingent this corner, including Hal and Tens of Gracie and his uh, father, Mauricio Gomez. Not quite sure who's wrestling is better here, Hodges or Kakarakos. It's also such an interesting style matchup between the two. Like, you know, wrestling somebody that's your own size and relative body builds one thing, but you probably couldn't have like even within the whole division, you probably couldn't have drawn like a stronger contrast between um, the body types of Kakarako and Hodger Gracie. Long and lanky versus short and stocky. Exactly. But I don't expect this one to stay on the feet for too long. You know, Hodges is known for having, pulling guard as well. He's got those huge long legs that you have to deal with. Uh, he's plenty comfortable from there. I mean, that's his strength. Um, I don't see any reason for Hodger to keep it on the, uh, the feet for so long. Another question is how long are they willing to fill each other out before they take a shot or pull guard, make a move? Again, is does the fact that there's no points counting in the first 10 minutes, is does that play into their strategy right now? Is that why they're kind of feeling each other out? It's a definite possibility. I mean, there's a lot of line here. I mean, Unlike the previous matches, neither of these guys have been to the final. Well, actually, I take that back. Kakareko's been in the finals before of this tournament, but neither of them are champs right now, so we'll definitely see a new champion crowned. The first 10 minutes of the finals are, are turning into like a, a warm up phase, basically. Or feeling out, again, like, you know. You know, to get to this point, like competitors have a lot of respect for each other, or respect for each other's abilities. They do not want to make a mistake. Like both of these guys have shown the ability. Like if you make a mistake, they can pay, make you pay for it. They'll capitalize on it. They'll get the submission really quickly too. Are they really feeling each other out, or I mean, do they even intend on taking a shot here? I think they're just warming up, just grab each other's necks, push each other off. 
I'm assuming that Hodger, like, I, I don't see, again, Hodger playing this game. Like, Kakareko is more than capable of doing this. But I haven't seen Hodger have a battle for, like this for too long. And he was taken down a couple of times in this tournament as well. Um, so I, I, I believe he might pull guard here. Just a question of doing that, like, you know, Kakareko's low sound gravity, his hips are way back too. I mean, it's a big leap that Hodger has to make to get that guard. It's a bit restless now, but when it gets down to the ground, it's going to be pretty exciting, I believe. Hopefully, Hodge will, sh will pull guard sometime soon. Get the action rolling. I doubt Kakareko will pull guard. I haven't seen it yet, but stranger things have happened. That's ruthless, bro. Both fighters unwilling to commit to a shot so far. I think it just must be a feeling out process right now. I was appreciating the um, legends that are being announced in the audience right now. Hicks and Gracie, Hoist Gracie, Big John McCarthy. In addition to all the talent, grappling talent that came here that competed in this event. From Jackson. How did he hurt his feet? Hodger takes a shot, finally. Kakareko keeping him on the ground, though. What's his strategy right now? He's trying to like spin around and go to the back. Oh, Hodger shoots him again. It's kind of ill advised, though, from a long distance. At least it's on the ground. Now, be prepared for some action. One thing about Hodger, huge defense on him, too. He's been in trouble before, but nobody can seem to put him away. The difference is when he turns the tide and gets the offense, he's very hard to resist. There he goes. Pulls guard, finally. Now he's going to get to work. Closes the guard up. Let's see what Hodger Gracie has from his closed guard. What setups is he going to use? He just, he just threw up a triangle right there, just kind of flipped it up there, nice and wild. Kakareko not buying it. Now Hodger Grace, he has the overhook on his left side. Now he lets it go. So it looks like he doesn't really care about an overhook. So he probably, you know, either 
Either he wants the underhooks here or he's going to keep throwing up those uh, wild triangles. Looks like he has some head control there. He might want his right arm on top of Kakareko's left arm. Right now he's got the underhook with his right arm. He might want the overhook. Seems like he keeps fighting for it. I think Kakareko's trying to like hold her hard down. Like you know, it doesn't quite have. He can't. Hodger's so long. Like you know, usually you'd like, use that shoulder and kind of press down and use that pressure. But Hodger's torso is so long. It's miles to go before he gets to that chin. Hodger just stretches out those legs of his. Kakareko's a mile back. Kakareko has some serious posture as well. It's going to be very hard to break his posture. It, it looks like uh, Hodger really does want that overhook on his right side. He fought for it there and he's got it now. He's got the overhook back again on his right side. He's got an overhook on the left side. What is he going to do with the overhook? I don't know. The first battle right now is to get that overhook. I mean, he, he's had the overhook, so it looks like he's probably just going to play wrist control and try to throw up wild triangles. It looks like that's his game from the guard, or perhaps sit up and set up for uh, Kimura, maybe. Hard to tell. Again with the overhook on his left side. Is Hodger going to grab Kakareko's left wrist and push it into his belly and set up for a triangle that way? There goes a, there goes a little short uh, triangle attempt there. Now he's got the underhook on his left side. Doesn't look like he wants the underhooks from full guard. I never do. I never usually go for underhooks, although there are some valid techniques from there. I usually like the overhooks. I like to stay up on top. I'll be interested to see uh, what how Kakareko's style has changed at all. Now, of course, he started off under Huas Valley Tudo. He was very competitive on the circuit. Um, went over to Gracie Baja for a little while uh, for part of their fight team, um, and then recently shifted over to the Brazilian top team. Um, so in between appearances here, he's had the opportunity to pick up quite a few new tricks. Roger Gracie has control, or had control, of Kakareko's right wrist, perhaps going for a triangle setup similar to the one I got on Hoyler in 2003. I'd get that one in, didn't you? I'd... Yeah, you gotta squeeze it in. If I don't, who will? Hodgers had, well, there he goes again. He had control of Kakareko's right wrist, possibly trying to set up another triangle. But Kakareko's just so strong, such good posture, and hard to control his body. Referee's warning him for songs or wanting to see some more action. The crowd does as well. <laughs> Now Kakareko's posturing up. Looking to break open the lace, Audrey. Got him open. Uh, another reason to make smart drugs for all in attendance for this day. The legendary Marco Rua. Going there. Kakareko in Hodger Gracie's half guard now. Hodger Gracie using the lockdown to keep Kakareko in his half guard, although it's not a full lockdown at this present time. Kakareko on top with the head and arm control, using his free foot to pry open Kakareko's legs. I call that the no hand pass. 
back to the lockdown. But see, see how it, it's, it's a lot harder to control someone in the lockdown when you got greasy legs. It's like hot oil wrestling. It's tough. With pants, again, with pants, like I said in the previous match, it's so much easier to control from the half guard. I'll tell you what's also difficult is when you have long legs and you're going to get somebody who has relatively short legs to control them in the half exactly. guard. Exactly. Kakareko with a beautiful path. Will he get the points? He did not control long enough. He might not have the points here. Will the judges give him the points? I'm not 100% sure we're even in point phase right now, actually. That is correct, Gumby. Thank you. Back into Hadra's closed guard. We're working hard. Look at the amount of sweat on the two of these guys right now. Kakareko has got to be like trying to wrestle a grease something. That's exactly what I'm talking about. All these, um, or most of the Abu Dhabi competitors come from a gi background. They're used to wearing pants. It would help tremendously at this point right now. Right now, we, we got Kakareko in Haja Gracie's guard. His legs are all greased up, all oily, and look at Kakareko's back. I mean, like I said, they're hot oil wrestling. Very hard to get a submission when you're hot oil wrestling. Hoist has the right idea right now with his outfit in, uh, in MMA. He's just wearing gi pants and no shirt on top. It makes for a more dangerous guard, more uh, dangerous half guard. And if you know the twister variations, which is just an inverted half guard with the control, you, know, you put, that, put all that together and, you know, wearing pants is a great idea in submission wrestling and MMA. Hoist has got it down. Well, I'm just showing a good lockdown here. Kakaroko basically trying to power his way through this half guard. Kakareko now and nice hit movement there. Yeah, but... nearly past Hodger Gracie's guard. Beautiful hit movement, like you said, Gummy. That was fantastic, but great recovery by Hodger Gracie to put him back in the guard. It's just so much uh, mileage to go right there if you want to get around Hodger's legs. It's trouble right there. And he's flexible, and he knows where to put him. Like, Hodger is trying to make something happen. It looks like he's having to spend a lot of energy to get Kakareko to move up or to do anything from within his guard right there. I mean, that might be part of Kakareko's strategy is to, you know, just physically grind it out with Hodger. Now, I don't think a scramble at this point would benefit be to uh, Kakareko's benefit. Kakareko still in Hodger Gracie's guard, postured up there for a second. Hodger pulling him back down, breaking his posh, posture once again. Hodger's trying to set something up. Perhaps another triangle, maybe. Kakareko posturing up again. Hodger's doing a good do job of breaking down Kakareko's posture. You can't really even think about passing the guard until you get your posture. Unless you're in half guard. Yeah. And that changes the rules entirely. Yeah, everything. But here, if you're in a closed guard, you got to posture before you can do anything. You're simply not going to be able to like muscle or force your way out if you don't start from a good base. Again, beautiful hip movement by Kakarek and the swoop around. 
Let's see if he can't. can. Let's see if he can stabilize and get the points. He does not stabilize. Well, the one thing, like, Kakareko had good hip movement there, but he wasn't able to control Hodger's hips there. So Hodger was just able to swivel out, put him back in guard in this case. And get up um, on his knees. Exactly. One of the things, though, as soon as Kakareko gets the hip moving around, he starts coming around. Instead of locking down those hips, it's going straight for Hodger's head. Again, there's just like a whole lot of mileage on Hodger. Um, a whole lot of other things you have to control. Over there. Excellent scramble by both fighters. Exactly. We're back to the same position we started from. Kakareko has some serious base. Very hard to sweep him. Hodger going for some kind of reverse guard there for a second. I'm quite sure what he was going after there. Dude, that was the end of regulation. That match, match went by fairly quickly. No point scored. Hunter <laughs> being fanned off by his corner. Meantime, Kakareko is being attended to by his corner as well. I think fatigue is definitely going to be a factor in this matchup. And if I had a score, I would give the slight edge to Kakareko. He's almost had at least three different passes. Just couldn't control Hodger long enough to get the points, but his hip movement's incredible. Yeah, I agree, I agree. He's definitely seen some improvements from, from his last outing. Um, but like I said, you know, when he got that pass, he's got to lock Hodger's hips down. Um, he's scrambling too fast, I believe, to get to the head. <laughs> Bit of a stare down between the two. A couple of exhales from Hodger. Tucker immediately going for the lead. Nice base and sprawl from Hodger there. Beautiful wizard by Hodger. Now they're tied up again. Nice. going for it again. Hard to great base. Better's here pummeling for position. Thank you. 
Will we see Hodge Gracie pull guard here? He's not taking any shots. You can practically see the sweat dripping off of these guys right now. Nice shirt. Picking up a bit. Maybe that Hodger doesn't want to pull guard right now because Kakagarho is so effective in like one controlling him, two nearly passing him right there. And I think the amount of pressure that Kakagarho put on him earlier uh, definitely had to like have some fatigue on Hodger. And plus, you know what? His guard did not work on Kakagarho at all. Never got close to any submission. So, you know, he's probably thinking, why pull guard? I can't finish this guy off my back, and I can't sweep him. So he might be thinking, just wait to the final minute, take a couple shots, and try to take this guy down. But I don't think he could take Kakareko down either. You know, his full guard isn't working. His half guard isn't working. The only thing he has left to score points in, in these final few minutes of overtime is probably to take that shot. But that almost seems just as impossible as finishing him off his back. Kakareko is just so strong and greasy. Yeah. Put those two together. And tremendous base. Let's not you know, that. I mean, he's showing some definite skills here as well. Hydra going for the takedown. Hydra's not getting good penetration on those takedown attempts, though. Kakura is able to easily sprawl and stuff it. And now we're in this position where Hodger's turtle up. Worried about Kakareko either going for a front block or uh, taking his back. Hodger goes to the feet and Kakareko just lets him go back up. You know, it could be the Kakareko strategy right now is to get that last second takedown, get the two points and get the W right now. Looks like Kakareko took a poke to the eye. Unintentional, of course. Yeah. Well, the two of them are just pummeling for position right there. Hodger's being a little bit more aggressive at this point. Coming forward, Kakareko backing up. I've said this a million times on this broadcast alone. Like, you know, Hodger's long. Like, if you think you're out of his reach, you probably aren't. Not much time left in this overtime. Kakareko takes another shot. He's driving. He's got the body lock on Hodger. Hodger's got a serious wizard, though. Hodger had double under overhooks there. Try to 
throw Kakareko didn't even come close. But I think that's got to be Hodger's strategy right now. He's obviously, you know, he wants to score the two points and get the victory. Oh, Kakareko has Hodger Gracie's back. Kakareko, Hodger's got the advantage. Almost suplex in there. Wow. Look at them staring at each other coming back onto the mat. Hodger's not taking his eyes off of Kakareko for a second. Very difficult, very difficult to take these guys down. Actually, not seeing too many slips um, on these surfaces right now. I'll tell you that because uh, we're stuck laying down these mats Friday night. Um, where it's actually the underneath of the regular type mats, so you get all the traction on that. Um, and then kind of like a thick shirt type of material, canvas, pulled on top of the whole thing. You know, so when you guys see so you guys slide around like you just did there, you know, it's rough. Hodger with the shot, not even close again. Again, he's just not getting enough penetration on these shots. Now, Hodger divides his time uh, between uh, Brazil and the UK where he has an academy. And in the UK, they have more of a judo type base. Whereas, um, you know, grapplers from the US, of course, come from a bit more of a wrestling type base. And they're a bit more used to taking the takedowns. Not saying that the Brazilians or the Europeans aren't catching up or don't have a high level of uh, wrestling. Um, but it's just not as ingrained in them as much as it is here in the United States. For that matter, like where it is in the UK right now, he's got a lot of respect in the judo arena. Uh, Hodger actually teaches at the uh, top judo academy um, in London twice a week. Um, they've really embraced it. and they, you know, He's one of the forces that's going to take jiu-jitsu to the next level worldwide, and he's definitely the leading force in Europe. Kakareko, on the other hand, I don't think he's ever trained with a gi in his life. Um, so all of his takedowns and bases, attacks, and things like that have always come from a no-gi background. And it's very much more of a strength and controlling type game. Although, as we said, you know, he's shifted several different academies recently um, over the last few years. Um, a, control a controlling type game is a great thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those shots by Hodger Grace here, not even close. Yeah, it's taken from too far away. Oh. He is definitely becoming a lot more aggressive. And it does appear that Kakareko might be fatiguing just a bit. It's the end of that overtime. I've lost count of how many overtimes we've seen today, Eddie. Kakareko is very fatigued right now. It took a long time for him to get up to get to the corner. <laughs> Hodger being fanned off by his corner right now. Luckily, that last break happened right in Hodger's corner. So he's able to just basically stand up and fall right back into his chair. But Hodger is definitely picking up the pace towards the end of that match. Yeah, 
I'm gonna need to take a reason for this. Uh, is that gonna be an intermission? Yeah, well, there's gonna be one more championship. Go ahead and take one. Yeah. I gotta go too. I mean, we got a commentary. Talker, I got not coming up. It's over. Where's the bathroom up there? Parker Gracie is taking the championship, and Cocker Echo is not able to come up and continue with this match. Huge win for Hodger coming in as champion. He's fair. A little bit of a shame to see that happen, but these guys had a war going through here. Hodger is being carried in by his by Health and Henzo. Just an absolutely tremendous battle here. Hodger stands alone, accepting the championship. <laughs>